Hi, this is Apostle Charlene Allen and Teresa Escobar and Prophet Crystal. And we're here for another recording of how I got my mind back. Today, we're going to be talking about trust, not just trust, trust after being hurt, not just hurt, but hurt deep, deep hurt. How do we get over when somebody just crushes us? Uh, Prophet Crystal will share with us and we'll kind of chime in as, as the Lord leads us. But first we'll have Teresa open us in prayer and then we'll do, do a drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. For Prophet Crystal. Let's <laughs> 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 <Okay>. pray. <laughs> Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, and we bless and honor you, Lord God, today. We thank you for this time yes, to be amongst one another and um, amongst your people, Lord God. We yes. ask that you speak to us and speak through us. We ask for your anointing to, boot, to be upon us, Lord God, yes, and anoint the hearers who are listening, the ears of those who are listening to this broadcast, Lord God. And speak to them, Lord God. Let them hear your voice. Let them hear your sound, Lord God. Your sound. Let it resonate in them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Teresa. <laughs> Y'all trip. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> All right. We're doing good. We're doing good. I'm deal. good. I'm good. I just walked a mile, 341 stairs. Woo woo. Do you think? So mm. I'm doing, I don't know. We'll see what tomorrow looks like. <laughs> you won't be able to get up out of bed. She'll have a deep hurt. <laughs> She'll have a deep hurt. <laughs> hey. Don't say that, Bustle. <laughs> <laughs> So just like Apostle Charlie mentioned, we are going to be talking about learning how to trust again after deep hurt. I want you to go to the word with me. We're going to, um, we're going to be in the word today. We're going to start in Proverbs 3, um, verses 4 through 8. I am reading the message version, one of my favorite versions. Uh, starting at verse 1, don't lose your grip on love and loyalty. Tie them around your neck, carve their initials on your heart, earn a reputation for living well in God's eyes and the eyes of the people. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Can we say that again? Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the only one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God, run from evil. Your body will glow with health, my God. To trust God, your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. And then I want to look at Psalms 23, verse four. It says, even when the way goes through, Death Valley, I'm not afraid. When you walk at my side, your trusty shepherd crook makes me feel secure. And I really wanted to open up with these two scriptures because it really breaks down what trusting in God looks like. Trusting in God restores, it's restorative, it brings back, it, it, it revitalizes. But and, and sometimes I don't like to use the word, but because, it, you know, a lot of many say that it cancels out what you just said. I think it's, it's, it's relevant to look at Psalm 23, 4, because when trust is broken, the experience is like going through a death because mm -hmm. you're not only dealing with trust being broken. You, there's some cousins that come along, betrayal and rejection that come along with this, the feeling that something has died in you that you've actually lost somebody it, the, the the breaking of trust is equivalent to an affair an adulterous affair mm -hmm. and that is the weight of it that um people will feel 
And so I think it's very important that we really delve into this topic because this is an ongoing issue as long as we're humans, because we all gonna mess up. We're gonna do stuff. Sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it's not. Many times it's out of ignorance and just, <clears throat> excuse me, growing, learning, making mistakes, which we're all allowed to do. But when we make mistakes, it does affect other people. And so even as we talk about this topic, I know we all have our individual experiences of trust being broken, but we may have done that to somebody as well, not intentionally, you know, so I want to be cognizant as we're having this conversation that um, as you're listening to this, being mindful that you may have broken somebody's heart versus somebody always breaking your heart. You know, because it's very easy to get so self-absorbed about what's happened to us versus what we've done to people in our own bondage and needing healing and deliverance. And so um, I would love to really unpack this. One of the first things I want to look at is why trust hurts so deep is because it's like glue in relationships. It holds relationships together. Um, it's what allows us to feel safe. What do you think about that? Safety is crucial in relationships because it is the place where we are most vulnerable physically and emotionally. That's it right. is where we connect with people. And when that is broken, I want you to think about the residue of glue. Sometimes it takes acetone to get it off. I mean, just, just something in the natural when you're trying to scrub something away when that trust has been broken it's a ripping away yeah and so that that repairing process can be just as painful and a lot of the times when when you're looking at okay well god I, I need your help help me to forgive because we know forgiveness is a necessary part in order for the reconciliation process to begin right but in that if you're struggling with the process and what happened and understanding that you're, you're trying to do, I open myself back up to these people again or to this person, to this job, to this boss, to this ministry, this pastor, whatever the scenario may be, understanding that learning how to trust again can be just as painful. What yeah. are y'all's thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree with you. Um, one of the words that I that came to me was vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And you said that about trust. Trust makes you vulnerable. Uh, when you trust someone, you're vulnerable with them. You open up to them. You're, you're bare. Right. And you lay it all out. When you trust somebody, you can be you. Yes. And when that trust is broken, that makes you kind of be like enclosed again. Mm-hmm makes you be makes you form a shell or, or a wall towards that person or towards other people absolutely i think yeah. it definitely grows to um against other people because you're like okay i'm not gonna let this happen to me again and yeah. so we begin to put walls around our heart and around our relationships and we start wearing masks yeah. because one of the things is security we want to feel secure. And when we've been betrayed, our security has been shattered. Yeah. And there's nothing like being naked and ashamed because that's what happens when that trust has just been ripped out from, from any, any, any direction, like you're saying, Prophet Crystal, that I can, I can break Teresa's trust. And as a ministry leader or as a friend, um, that was going to take some doing to mend it, not only on yeah. Teresa's part, but on my part. And so when that security is shattered, we have to have another place to, to rest. Because many times we put too much rest in people and yes. not enough rest in God. Right. And that's where the problem becomes. Yeah. I put all my eggs in this basket and Teresa, and she had the nerve to say, blah, 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 blah. I'll never trust again. And mm -hmm. you're going to fulfill your own prophecy. Yeah. You know, because we put our trust in people, we get disappointed because people are people. People, humans are humans. But 
if we're naked and unashamed before God, he'll never hurt us. Right. And we can always put our trust in God, always. And I, I had to learn that. I had to learn that he would never hurt me. He would never betray me because of what I went through in my childhood, in my adult life. I had to learn that he has the best for me in every area of my life. Mm -hmm. I had to learn that. And that's a huge part. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Charlene. I was going to say that um, part of the, the trusting and trusting God is to ask how you should have a relationship with people. Because mm -hmm. sometimes our, our trust is shattered because we put too much too fast in the people yeah. yeah they haven't really proven anything mm -hmm. and we just throw all of our trust in people and have expectations that the person don't know about and that kind of messes up your trust level too because of unexplained expert uncommunicated expectations that you have on people i think we're just acquaintances you think you're my best buddy i'm like we don't even talk <laughs> right how are we best buddies <laughs> yeah and so those expectations in relationship has to be explained and explored and for me my first question to god is how are we in relationship mm -hmm. what is this relationship with this person do i let them in do i don't do i not is this just for outreach or is it you have to ask god to That's to good. to go into relationship just don't run into it I guess you can but I ask because some relationships are toxic mm -hmm. and God don't want you in it so that's what I was going to say it's that's good that you problem. said that because I think a lot of times too people are thirsty and they don't realize how thirsty they are mm -hmm. and when they see a behavior in somebody that fulfills that thirst mm -hmm. and then they begin to consume that relationship to fulfill a need and then once that need is fulfilled you realize that you ended up having <laughs> you were thirsty yeah. and um it was really a, a space that the holy spirit needed to occupy that truth needed to be poured into you in that area you needed to fall back and to stop seeking um, people to fulfill something that only God can do mm -hmm. because then when man disappoints you it's everybody's the issue versus you know maybe I need to clean house maybe I need to take inventory and identify why um, I'm following falling into certain behavior patterns and and then there is the opposite where well, th there are vindictive people they are out to be connected to you because of what they can obtain by being connected to you, your name, the other people that you're connected to. And so yes, there is manipulation. There is straight up witchcraft. There are people that are not looking out for your best interest. And this is why we need to, um, the only, the loudest voice in our heads should be the voice of the Lord, not man, not mama, not pastor, not auntie, not leader. You have to seek the Father. And yes, God will use his people. I'm not, I'm not minimizing that. But when you solely rely upon God to only speak to you through people, you're out of balance. You're out of order. Because God will speak directly to you if you get in his word. You, you begin to seek his face. Ask questions. The Holy Spirit will, re will respond. He will quicken you. He will minister to you through discernment. He will show you. Uh, many things but I think again it goes back to um, unhealthy patterns of thinking and and needing your own inner healing to keep you from falling back into patterns that have gotten you into trouble and relying upon people versus God yeah I think um <clears throat> I'd like to share mm -hmm. I was thirsty and I wanted people to um feel that void mm -hmm. and I kind of put them up there you know and God had to show me through, through people who spoke truth to me and realized I was doing this because I didn't realize it. It just was a natural pattern for me to do. Okay. And the Lord, the Lord had people speak truth to me, had certain people speak truth to me like, hey, 
you're behaving like this and you need to put your eyes on God and not on me, you know, that type deal. And it was kind of a rough lesson. Okay. It was a rough lesson for me, but I'm glad he did it. I'm glad he did it because it, it taught me that only, like you said, only, there's only play, there's only certain places that only God can fulfill and God can satisfy. And I was looking towards people and for people to feel, to quench that thirst that only God could do. And so, yeah. Well, and even with what you're saying, there's also a reestablishing of trust with yourself. Because once people have hurt you and betrayed you, um, it's, a, it's natural to fall into, how did I miss this? Where did I go wrong? So then you stop trusting yourself. Trusting oh, I can tell you. instinct. And, and the Holy Spirit may be speaking to you, but you don't trust it because mm -hmm. of what, because somebody got so close. And usually those particular areas of deep damage come from parents, come from people in positions of power, pastors, um, like I said, parents, caregivers, when yeah. they violate your trust, that is usually where the deepest wounds come from. And that, I mean, we could talk for hours on that because you're not only dealing with somebody that's raising you up in the natural as a parent or raising you up in the spirit, but that is a major violation. And so quite naturally, you stop trusting the Holy Spirit to speak truth to you. You question it. And so going back to reestablishing what that looks like and forgiving yourself and stop giving yourself such a hard time and then learning, allowing the Holy Spirit to show you so that you can begin the healing process. You know, one thing, and just thinking about you talking about um, people close to you, I know for ministry leaders, you know, you pour in, you pour into people, and then it's it's almost like they get what they want, and then they move on. Yeah. And that is like, you know, pouring all your water into a well, and then they run off with your water. Yeah. And so how do we as leaders help leaders to understand um, how to recoup from such a, a reciprocal problem? Because people are coming and going all the time and it's, it gets easy for people to, for leaders to, to pull back and no longer give because they know the person's just going to go. Yeah. What would you say to leaders that, experience this hurt and withdraw themselves simply because they know they won't stay do you have any thought to that i do i i would hands down number one you have to check your inner circle mm. because if your inner circle is not balanced if you don't have a balanced amount of people that are pouring back into you you will run dry because it is the nature of ministry you are fulfilling needs and you are amongst people who are broken, who are thirsty, who are hungry. So they are coming to receive. Mm -hmm. And if you are not at a place that you have some accountability, uh, overseer, somebody that is feeding you, you're setting yourself up to be damaged. And that damage can be very hard to, to come back from. God can do it if you're willing to do the work and the healing process, but the prerequisite to, of, of avoiding that is to establish your circle. And that is balance that you're not pouring into 10 people, but you have two people pouring into you. I, I believe that as much as you're pouring out, you should also have this. It also being reciprocated where it's all, also being poured back into you, whether it's through, teachings um people that you know are 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 gonna you're sitting under tutelage that doesn't just appease to your flesh and to your desires but is also keeping you under the knife 
that maintenance, your ongoing healing, inner healing and deliverance that's necessary for, for leaders because it is the nature of advancing the kingdom. It is a straight up war. You are on the battlefield. I'm not going to war with an AR-15 and two people. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and you learn this when you have the right people around you. When I take a hit physically, I can't be up trying to travail for 10 hours when I need to rest. You right. call your, the troops in to handle, to handle it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's where leaders have gotten out of balance. And some of it is not intentional. You go in with, with you know, great intentions and wanting to do right by God and people. But at the end of the day, you're dealing with people. You're dealing with humans. You're dealing with sin. Mm -hmm. And you cannot be successful without your tribe. You have to have your people. And so that's that would be my suggestion. Amen. 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 Having having accountability and having a circle of trusted people and being vulnerable to yeah. those people that you do trust is going to yeah. be very important. Even those that are in your inner circle that report to you, so to speak, mm -hmm. being vulnerable with them so that they can understand the impact it's having on you. Yeah. And they, and they can feed into you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's being naked and not being ashamed, even as a leader. Um, sometimes we wear masks as leaders and say, well, I can't tell Teresa what I'm going through because she might leave. That's mm -hmm. insecurity. Yeah. You know, if Teresa's going to leave, she's going to leave. That babe's yeah. going to leave. <laughs> She's yeah. she looking for a reason to leave. But if people are going to stay with you, they're going to stay with you regardless. I've had people tell me, I'm very vulnerable as a leader. And they said, it's so refreshing because they think that people in the front, they put on this front like they're perfect. And by saying that you've sinned, that you've done wrong and, 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 you know, asking for forgiveness makes you more real. Yeah. People want to be real. Wow. That's how trust is built by being yeah. real. Yes. I agree with that. That's huge. That mm -hmm. is a huge, huge, huge. <clears throat> you know, I remember being pulled aside and told that I was too vulnerable as a pastor hmm. and that no, that the, the, Oh gosh, what's the terminology they use? Um, no lay person needs to know all of that about you. Mm. They don't need to know how tough the fight has been. And I'm like, what? How you play? Yeah. You know, it, it's really like trying to, or, or, well, you can be, it's okay to be vulnerable about low level issues, but these deep issues, like, they don't need to know all that. And I was sitting there like, mm -hmm. that is how people connect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I remember that that type of pastoring, there was no depth. It mm -hmm. was, I'm like, like, how do people learn from you if you don't go there? Right. I don't want to hear about your 10 prosperity uh, situations and how amazing things. I want to know the process. How did you get there? Yeah, because it's exhausting when I get to hear about, oh, this check showed up and then this miracle happened. Praise God for the miracle. But I want to know how your attitude was in the waiting process. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that. Mm -hmm. What were your anchor scriptures? How did you trust God in the process? Yeah, because all I'm hearing is the palace. Let's talk about the prison. Let's talk about the pit. Right. Because that's where a lot of people are trying to dig themselves <laughs> out of. When they're, uh, you know, when you're dealing with former drug addicts and, and um, those that have been locked up for years and felonies and they can't get jobs and, mm -hmm. but you want to talk about how you've established this business, you have all this money coming in. Well, brother, talk to me about your prison season. I want to know where your mind was at. I want to know how you were praying. Were you actually vulnerable? Were you crying out to God or were you cussing everybody out? Like, cause mm -hmm. I feel like cussing everybody out right now. So, you know, <laughs> I need you to tell me how to get through that. Right. And so those type of messages are, are, were very exhausting and, and I didn't find hope, mm -hmm. you know? And so, 
you know, obviously feel, I learned to feel good gospel. Come on. I don't think the cross felt good. <laughs> they get hurt. Yeah. Well, and if you look at the word, if if God did not want us to share our process, why did where why are we reading and preaching from everybody else's process? Mm-hmm. 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 You know, you always have to go back to the word. When when people have told me, I just need to repent, I'm still in sin, and that's why you're still sick, and there's something that you haven't released. And I'm like, well, how about this is just the cross that I have to bear? Because the, the, you know, the crucifixion didn't go away. Mm-hmm. Jesus mm-hmm. still had to get on the cross, and he was without sin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then he gets up and he and he promises the thief on next to him, I, you will be with me in paradise. The one who right. was with sin. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. It only takes a second to come out. Yeah. That's it. You know, and but but it really this trust piece is huge because it's it's such a, a major part of who you are, who you're willing to open up to so that you can be naked and unashamed and God can develop you into being authentically you through your story, your journey, because that's what makes you amazing. That makes that's what makes your story um, so impactful. Um, but you have to find peace with the situation so that you for your own emotional well-being in order yeah. to move forward. And I think part of that moving forward and finding that healing is don't move so fast. Sometimes we move so fast in relationships that we haven't even had a chance to get over X and we're into Y and Z already. So now we have compounded hurt Mm -hmm. and we feel, and we wonder why we get drained. We have to give ourselves time to heal. Everybody knows about rebound relationships, but yet we rebound all of the time. How much time does it take to get over a relationship? It's different for every person, but you can know you're through it when you can, one, look at the person without wanting to slit their throat. Oh, man. Hey, that's real. That's real. <laughs> that's real. When, when you have some triggers that used to trigger mm-hmm. you with a situation and they don't fire anymore and you can walk through that, yeah. that trigger and, and not even recognize that you've gone through it until you've actually through it said, man, I remember when I would have. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to treat each person individual as an individual you, you can't go layer upon layer and taking those layers into a relationship thinking that you're going to be healthy because what that's going to do is do more deep hurt because it's now layered so give you t- give yourself some time to heal jesus walked away from the crowds for a while and spent time with the father yeah. whatever you need to do to to go into that secret place with god so that he can he said he heals the brokenhearted and he, he, he heals their wounds. He fixes their wounds. Yeah. You have to be willing to be fixed and not just to go out and say, uh, and man up or woman up and say, oh, I'm all right. You know, yeah, people say, you should be over that by now. I yeah. tell them, is that the stupidest thing you've ever heard? How, how do you know what they should be over? Right. Yeah, that's a big thing is, is, is that leaders, and I'm not saying all leaders, but some leaders and then some not leaders get over it. They say, get over it. Mm-hmm. Just get over it. Church hurts. What's that? Get over it. That's nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, have you ever been through it? Do you know what it's a process? They still hurt. <laughs> exactly. Well, right. They're it's- telling you get over it because they operate out of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean yeah. to cut you off. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. And those are those are the dangerous leaders. Yeah. So because, I, you know, it, it, it really disrupts the grieving process and there is healthy grieving and, and trapped grief is toxic and is very dangerous. And that goes back to trust in the Lord with all your heart, because when, when grief is trapped, that's when we became, when humans, people can become sick, mm-hmm. whether it's mental health or physical health. And a lot of times it's because nobody is giving you the space to heal 
to learn how to trust God, to go through your process because they need uh, access to your gifts and what you bring so that they can keep moving ministry forward so they can keep moving business forward and you being hung up is interfering with their agenda. They're not worried about you. They're worried about their agenda and moving it forward. Yeah. I think it's so important. And you mentioned this is your inner circle that you be vulnerable. Like you said, Apostle Charlene with your inner circle and they can be vulnerable with you. Mm -hmm. You pour into them and they can pour into you. Like you said, I think that's so important. I can think about my life when I was young, my trust was betrayed by my father. It was betrayed by my father because of the act that he did concerning me. I can talk about it now and not be triggered by it anymore mm -hmm. because I allowed God to heal me because of that. Mm -hmm. He healed me. I allowed him to. He healed a broken heart, like Pastor Charlene said. I, and God restored my relationship with my father before he passed away. Yes. And I'm so grateful for that. You know, but I had to learn to trust God and to go to God and let God, like you said, heal or fix, however you want to say it, to work in me. But I had to allow him to. And then I had to be honest with myself yeah. and with God. I had to be honest. When he called me on my trump card, he was like, now you you like this or you doing this. I had to be like, you're right. <laughs> Instead of trying to shuck and jive him and lie to him or hide behind something from him you know mm -hmm. so that that really so if there's there anybody out there i just feel like if there's anybody out there who's been betrayed by a parent when they were young know that god can restore and god can heal he can restore and heal your heart and he can restore your relationship but you gotta let god do that you gotta let him work in you work work within you work uh just in your mind because it messes with your mind too when that trust is betrayed it messes with your mind it, it gives you thoughts negative thoughts towards people uh, not be able to trust people not be able to share with people it isolates you mm -hmm. from people and so you need to be able to get your mind right and let god do that get your thought life right let god help you with that and just know that God can restore any relationship and he can heal any wound. Yes, I'm he can. Sorry, that's yes, he can, <clears throat> you know, and just learning to trust yourself again. I think the last part, which is, can be very complex and very difficult is be willing to see from the other party's perspective. And this is a mature, this is a mature conversation. Mm. Because when you're dealing with abuse, sexual violation, and getting to a place of wanting to be open to seeing from the other person's perspective, it's not that you're excusing them, right. it's just to get understanding so that you can move forward and then sit with Philippians 4, 8 through 9. When it talks about summing it all up, friends, I say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things that are true, that are noble that are reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Put it into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that and God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. And that's really kind of coming full circle where you've allowed God to work through you, being able to see from the other party's perspective, again, not to excuse it, right. but to help you move forward. You know, um, I dealt with that. The Lord taught me a lesson on that because I was, I, I felt my mother betrayed me when she chose my father to stay with my father. And I felt betrayed by her. But the Lord showed me he says now put yourself in her shoes mom had six kids mom had no job mom had no money she had nowhere to go you got to think from her perspective and I, I had to think I had to look at it mm -hmm. and understand where she was coming from it didn't excuse the act of what would happen to me 
but it gave me a better understanding that you don't know what another person is going through or their, what their situation is. Same thing with my father. The Lord mm -hmm. had to show me why he was the way he was or why he did what he did. Now, if he would have showed me that earlier on during the trauma drama, I would have been like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. But I had to grow in Christ. I had to mature in Christ. And then I believe that's when, like you said, you have to be mature. That's when he was like, okay, now I can show her this. And this yeah. is why this happened. This is why it was like this. It was down the generations. It was generational. And so, yeah, I, I, um, I agree. With you. I agree. I think the the one of the first steps before we can think about the other is to really get your mindset on who you are. Yes. Because when I was in that abuse, and I was an abusive relationship. And that Philippian scripture, when they would say these words, that would just cut me. I had to think on what is true. Is what they're saying true? Yeah. Is what they're saying true? I hear what they're saying, and I know they're not supposed to be saying this to me, but is it true? Mm -hmm. And when I took that scripture for myself, it let those words that was cutting oh. me and destroying me not go in because I had something to fight with. I had a truth. Yeah. The only yeah. way that you're going to get to the point where you can forgive the other is you got to forgive you. Yes. That's true. You've got to forgive you for a host of things, being stupid to be in a relationship, allowing this to go on, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, you've got to get to the point where I am worth it. Yeah. So what Lord is true. And once you know what the truth is, now you can now look at that person a little bit different because you know what they're saying is not true. And either it's your assignment to teach them truth or it might be your assignment to just deuces. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. And not forgetting. It's important to know that the behavior of the other person was his or her choice. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't reflect who, it, it reflects who they are, not who you are. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. And, and, and hurt people hurt people and hurt people are drawn to hurt people. They're mm -hmm. so used to chaos that order is confusing to them. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> That's we, true. We, we hurt. You have to understand hurt is like fire that's shut up in your bones. And before you can transfer the fire to the fire of God, you've got to put out that thing that's trying to kill you. Yes. You, you, we, ha we have to learn to turn the tables because right becomes wrong, particularly with the spirit of abuse. The spirit of abuse twist is a twisting spirit. And so since it is a twisting spirit, somebody can say, I love you. And you, you don't hear, I love you. It, it twists. Someone can show you that they love you by sh truly showing you compassion. But since it's twisted, you're going to do what it takes to get the love you want, even if it's wrong. That's yeah. how twisted the spirit of abuse is. You mm -hmm. don't want the abuse, but your mind has been, that's a whole nother story. But suffice it to say, <laughs> you have to want to get healed of the hurt. That's your first step. Do yeah. you want to be healed or do you just want to complain? Mm -hmm. Jesus even asked, what, what do you want? Do you want to be healed? No, nah, I want to collect a social security check, G. <laughs> I don't want to be healed. Jesus probably would have went right by him. It, it, just let him keep being a beggar. Yeah. He's not going to force himself on you to be healed. Do you want to be healed of the hurt? That's your first question to answer. Yeah. And if the answer is no, don't come in my office. Go to Crystal. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you come to my office. It's gonna be you gonna be like, oh dear God, why, why, why? You know, God asked me that question. He asked me that. He said, "Do you want to be healed? Do you really want to be healed mm -hmm. from schizophrenia?" And um, I had to be honest with him. It was hard. It was hard for me to 
let go of all those layers mm -hmm. in my mind and my soul, however you want to put it. And I had to tell them, I had to get down to the bare bones and tell them, be honest with them and tell them, yes, no matter what. But sometimes it's hard to be honest with yourself, but you got you got to do it with God, with yourself and with God. You have to, because he knows already. Mm -hmm. And it sets you free. Yeah. I mean, the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So what are our takeaways as we begin to close? Anyone have a takeaway? I would just say trust the reconciliation process. I know there's a lot in those few words. But reconcil this reconciliation process, it does not feel good. So if you're looking to feel good, News alert, <laughs> it's, it's scalpel. You know, you're going into the surgery room, you're going into the OR mm -hmm. and God knows what he's doing. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. He's just yeah. waiting on us to lay down, take the anesthetic and to trust him. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think that would be my takeaway. Uh, going right back to Proverbs three, uh, base text is lean not on your own understanding yeah D don't don't lean on your understanding but acknowledge him acknowledge god and he will direct your path he wants to direct your path through your heart Amen. not your head so if you lean it on your own understanding you're trying to wrap your head around it god wants you to wrap your heart around him because once you wrap your heart around him he will rewire your brain. Yes, yes, that's good. I like that. I like that. <laughs> so that's mine. Well, I like that. I would say, I would go along with, with um, Apostle Charlene. I would say, trust God, put God first. If you put God first and trust God first, he will, and if you cooperate with him, he will do what needs to be done in you. He will mend your heart. He will make it rewire your brain and he'll reconcile your relationships if that's what his desire is for you and that's your desire i, I agree with all three i, I want to put this guy's putting this on my heart for somebody possibly or maybe i'm just telling them a story telling myself when it comes to trust sometimes god tells us things and we take it as a suggestion don't take God's voice as a suggestion. Take it as a command. That's good. Because sometimes we think, oh, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And it's, no, he's, he, he doesn't demand it. But when he is commanding it, don't take his commands as a suggestion. Obey his voice, regardless of how it sounds. He knows what you need to heal. So, God doesn't make suggestions. Huh, Crystal, why don't you get healed? Have you ever heard him say that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, 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 Jesus, like, I suggest you go to the cross. These are demands and commands. I, I, I commit my spirit to it. Was, it was, he did it. It wasn't a yeah. suggestion. You got to do something. Sorry, Chris, go ahead. I'm done. No, it, it just made me think about when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, sweat and blood. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't avoid his process. Mm -hmm. He yeah. had to go to the cross. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he cried out to God, take this from me. Take this cup. But even Jesus showed us how to go through our process when we don't want to do it. Let your will be done. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Um, okay. So close good. us out, Teresa. Actually, I was gonna. I want to, um, Pastor Crystal to do it. If that's Praise okay. God. You're you're the leader. <laughs> Let's get it. God, we thank you. We honor you, and we thank you, Father, for continuing to speak to us. 
where we need to hear from you, Father. God, I lift up the listeners to you today, those that are wrestling with trusting and learning how to trust again. Father, we thank you that you have met them where they needed to hear you today. We thank you, God, for eyes that are being opened and ears that are being opened, oh God, to hear what thus saith the Lord. Uh, Father, we just pray that your word will begin to dismantle every lie that would try to anchor itself in the souls of the wounded vessels, oh God, through trauma and drama. But Father, we thank you that your word is a healing salve, oh God, to our souls, oh God, that yeah. as we learn to trust you, Father, that you uh, resuscitate and you bring life back to us, oh God, that it is healing to our bones, it is health to our bodies, to be established and rooted in the trust of the Lord, oh God. So Father, I pray for those that have been in this rumination of recycling all of the stuff over and over again that has happened to them. But God, I pray that you would give them the strength, oh God, to lay it at your feet and to let you breathe upon their bodies, their soul, their spirit, oh God, and that truth would arise in them, oh God, that the enemy will be scattered, oh God. Father, we thank you for the process. We thank you for healing. We thank you for revelation. Now, God, I pray that you would embody your people with your love, oh God. There is no greater love than the love of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for healing. We thank you for reconciliation. And we thank you for trust that is being reestablished in the lives of your people. In the mighty healing name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you everyone for attending. I see you ladies next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.